Hey everybody, I'm John Granado, and that is Lance Zerline. You can hear us mornings on ESPN 97.5 and 92.5. Hit subscribe if you haven't yet, so you get all of our content here at Sports Map HLU. I've seen where where draft experts have given the Texans A's, and I've seen where they've gotten C's because of the trade. I want to know where the preeminent draft expert, Lance Zerline, what kind of grade did you give our Houston Texans? I don't give grades to tests that haven't been taken. So I can tell you how I think they did. I think they did fine. I did, did I love how much they gave up? No, but I also recognize that's above my pay grade because once they decided that, that the fans and the owner and maybe some people in the building were going to get one guy they wanted in C.J. Stroud, then D'Amico and the rest of football operations were going to get the guy they wanted. And so they, you know, Arizona knew that they had to have Will Anderson, so they made him pay a premium price. Now, it, it stings right now, but if both those players become good players, then they could be the cornerstones for turning us around. I think, John, this has a chance. This has a chance to potentially rival the 2006 draft. 2006 was famous because it had Mario Williams, D'Amico Ryans, ironically enough, Owen Daniels. Um, mm-hmm. You had Eric Winston. Their best draft ever. Yeah, it was a, it was a, a it was a turning point draft where they used those guys as the turning points for being able to elevate and eventually get to your 11 and 12 season. Um, you look at Tank Dell, who's small but explosive at wide receiver. Obviously, your quarterback, C.J. Stroud, is going to be the most important pick of the draft, either in a positive or negative way. Uh, Will Anderson, I think the Texans will tell you he's just as important on what he brings off the field and in the locker room and changing culture as he will be on the field rushing the passer. Uh, Dylan Horton is a guy who fits what D'Amico Ryans wants to do defensively. Juice Scruggs, we had T.J. McCrae on the show, who was a a longtime NFL personnel guy who said he believes that center is becoming one of the most important positions in all of football. And Juice Scruggs, the Texans took him in the second round. So this has a chance, if things work out, to be the next big draft for the Texans 17 years later, after the sixth draft, ironically enough, Mm -hmm. with D'Amico Ryans, uh, to have D'Amico at the head coaching position and to potentially have a draft that helps you turn around this glut that you're in right now. Because this is terrible football that we've witnessed. Oh. Can this draft, John, be the one to get you out of it? Well, hopefully it's going to be watchable because it hasn't been watchable the last couple watchable of years. Watchable is not nice. Even, not even watchable. But Tank Dell, I think, and Stroud and, and company and Will Anderson bring a watchability to the team. My biggest fear is that Roger Goodell says with the first pick that the Arizona Cardinals – got from the Houston Texans, they select Caleb Williams in the 2024 NFL draft. Are they going – do you think – is there any – chance? Colin Cowherd hasn't won in six games this year, so they won't be horrific, and that won't be the number one overall pick or even good enough to get one of the top quarterbacks. Are they good enough now to, to not worry about that? Well, I don't know. I mean, they got to play. I would argue that if you look at the potential quarterback draft next year, that you could end up going three quarterbacks, even four quarterbacks deep, potentially, with pretty good prospects. So I think that was the argument that some people might make is why don't risk it on a quarterback you don't want. Play it out next year because even if even if you can't – even if you're not one of the two worst teams in, in football, if you have two first-round picks, that's a lot of capital to move up and get a quarterback you might want next year. Well, that requires – you know, to, to really have a pretty solid grasp on your scouting grades for next year's quarterbacks. And maybe the Houston Texans did that, and they and they just felt like C.J. Stroud was going to be better in their books than the guys who were there. Maybe they felt like he was a better fit for the offense. Um, but you're right. I mean, you know, you can't have uh, – what's it called? The uh, shopper's remorse – buyer's remorse. You can't have buyer's remorse – no. This early, you have to wait and well, play yeah. it out, and hopefully C.J. Stroud will be the guy, and we won't worry. Hopefully they win eight games, John, and nine games, and we're not even worried about – we're picking 15th. What do we care, 17th? Uh, Yeah, man, I hope you're right. Nine games, what the heck? I mean, that, you're talking crazy. But listen, even with 
you know, even with the both of those picks, there's no guarantee that you're going to get up and get to Caleb Williams. Arizona or whomever is going to have that number one pick, and whoever has that number one pick, if it's not you, is going to need a quarterback. Probably so. So they're going to take that guy. Tampa Bay, don't sleep on Tampa Bay yeah. being really terrible. No, they're going to be really terrible as well, and they could well have that pick too. So there is no guarantee, but you're right. If you didn't like the guy, but apparently they do. I mean, I heard Nick Casario say how much he loves – uh, C.J. Stroud and how C.J. Stroud is going to be the future of the Houston Texans. And I hope he's right. I hope that he is right, and I hope it shows out this year because I don't want to see Arizona taking Caleb Williams with the Texans pick. That is for sure. 